Hello, hello. In today's math lesson, we're going to look at converting two-way tables into relative frequency tables. And we have some examples to go through our lesson. Let's first start with a little terminology. Um, we have a two-way table, or what's called a contingency table, here at the top. And we're looking at people with blue eyes versus brown eyes and eating breakfast on a regular basis, yes or no. And so the joint frequency, this verbiage is important to know, joint frequency are the counts in the body of the table. That's the middle of the table here. And that's where we're joining our two variables together. We're joining blue eyes or brown eyes with breakfast or no breakfast. So it makes sense it's called a joint frequency because we're joining our two variables together here in the body of the table. Now, the total frequency for any row or column is called a marginal frequency. So a marginal frequency is where we add up a column, like blue eyes to 320 or brown eyes to 275, or we add up a row, 190 plus 110 was 300 that said yes to breakfast on a regular basis. So these are called marginal frequencies, and they're where we add up our rows and columns around the margins. So joint frequencies in the middle, Marginal frequencies where we add up columns and rows. So we want to first find the marginal frequencies here. So you guys can pause the video here, draw this T table. It's going to be super helpful or contingency table and find the marginal frequencies by adding up the columns and rows. All right, welcome back. So if we added up grades, we would get 112. We add up our column for popularity, 40. Our column for sports, we have 59. And then we're going to add across our rows. We're going to, for ninth grade, 31 plus 18 plus 23, we get 72. We add up the row for 10th grade. We add up the row for 11th grade. And then we can find our overall total, in this case, of 211. And this is just finding marginal frequencies for a two-way table or a contingency table. Now, we could take this and convert it into a relative frequency table. And that's our goal today. So... The two-way table can easily be changed to show relative frequency by finding the ratio of each cell's frequency to the total. So to calculate relative frequency, divide each count in the frequency table by the overall total. So we're going to take our two-way table and we're going to convert it to a relative frequency table. And in this case, our overall total is this 211 number. So to convert our two-way table to a relative frequency table, we need to divide each cell by the overall total of 211. So each of these, 31 divided by 211, 39 divided by 211, 42 divided by 211. We're going to take each number and we're going to divide it by this overall total. So that gives us our 1.00 or our 100% of data here at the totals. So we could take our calculator and convert each of these over. So we're going to make a new table right below our old table. And it's gonna start blank, but we have all our same categories of grades, popularity, sports, and our grades of nine, 10, 11. And we're gonna take each number, 31 divided by 211, and we're gonna basically change everything to a decimal. So when we divide, we'll change each number to a decimal to the nearest hundredth. And you also sometimes see this as a percent. So we know that 0.15 is the same as 15%. So if you see this in decimal form or percent form, you're well aware of equivalents at 0.15 and 15% would be the same. So we can go through and continue to do this for the whole table. 39 divided by 211, 42 divided by 211, 112 divided by 211, 18 divided by 211, 16 divided by 211. So I'm going to continue to divide each number by our overall total of 211, and it changes everything to decimals. And we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. And so 0 0.09, if you didn't see this in decimal form, we might see 9%, 8%, 3%, 19%. We have the overall total or the 100% of being the totals for the entire table. So that took our two-way table and changed it to a relative frequency table. Then we can answer questions um, about the data. So we have a survey here of 9th, 10th, and 11th graders, and what they prioritize. Do they prioritize grades, popularity, sports? What do they think is most important? 
And so we need to make sure we pay attention to the conditions in each of these to see are they talking about the overall table or are they want talking about one particular row or column. So do more 10th graders choose popularity or sports? So 10th graders not talking about the whole table, it's just talking about this particular row that has to do with 10th graders and we have popularity and sports 0 0.09 or 9 hundredths is larger than 8 hundredths. So sports was their highest priority. Which grade had the greatest response? The grades were the most important. All right, let's look here at grades. We're just looking at the column that has to do with grades. We have 0 0.15, 0 0.18, 0 0.20. Well, 11th graders thought grades were most important, probably because they were applying to colleges, and then you want to have a great GPA to get into the college you'd like to go to. So what else do we have here? We have which grade had the most overall students respond? All right, so we're looking at totals for 9th, 10th, and 11th grade here, and they're pretty even, 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.31. They're all in the 30% area, um, slightly higher for 10th grade. 0.35 or 35% would be the greatest respondents for 10th grade. Now, we can have totals by rows or columns. So instead of just relating everything to the overall total, Sometimes we have relative frequency tables that are just based on a column or row. So we can make relative frequency tables using totals for each row or column as 1.00 or 100% instead of the overall total. So let's look at an example of one of those. So we have Latin and French, and we have blue eyes and brown eyes. And so we have for our Latin class with 22 people with blue eyes, 68 in French class with blue eyes, Latin, 38, for brown, so we're matching up our variables. So then, see on our relative frequency table, we had the 1.00, 1.00 for the row totals. So they want this row to add up to 1.0, this row to add up to 1.0. So the first thing we're going to need to do is calculate some totals. So if I do the total people with blue eyes, I would do 22 plus 68 is 90, 38 plus 58 is 96. Now I can find my relative frequency by taking each of these and dividing it by the row total. So 22 divided by 90 is going to give me 0.24 for my relative frequency table. And then I could do 68 divided by 90 to get 0.76. Now, depending on rounding, this might come out to be 0.99 or 1.01. There might be a little bit of differentiation, but this one came out nice and pretty, perfect, 1.00. How about this one? We're doing our overall total at 1.00 for this particular row. So 38 divided by 96, 0.4, 58 divided by 96, 0.6. So I think you guys are ready to try one of these on your own. So you guys take, below is a two-way table describing sixth and seventh graders at a school and whether they bring or buy their lunch. Create a relative frequency table by columns. All right, pause the video here and you guys make the relative frequency table and come back, check to see how you did. All right, so to add up our columns, we notice that the 1.00s are down at the bottom of the columns, meaning we're comparing everything to the total for the column. So I need to add up my sixth graders to get 294 sixth graders, add up my seventh graders to get 326, and then for this column, I'm going to divide 136 by 294 to get my relative frequency at 0 0.46 and 158 divided by 294 to get my relative frequency for buys at 0.54. Over here, I'm going to divide 108 divided by 326 and 218 divided by 326 to get my relative frequency. All right, I hope that helps you guys in changing two-way tables to relative frequency tables. And remember, those decimals are the same as if they were in percent form. They're equivalents. Have a great day. O-U-T spells out. Thank you